So New Orleans actually sits below sea level. It is, and that's why it flooded so bad during Katrina. And to keep the water out, you have to build levee systems. I'm with my colleague, Chris Macaluso, who's with the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership. But to protect those levees, you have to have natural infrastructure like swamps and wetlands and barrier islands. This is the Maurepas Swamp. We're kind of halfway between Baton Rouge and New Orleans right now. And why is this swamp important to this entire system? You know, this swamp is important. It stores water during hurricanes. It's a great wildlife habitat. It used to be a really good fishery, but it's not connected to the Mississippi River anymore, and it doesn't get the kind of water exchange it needs. There's a lot of invasive vegetation in here, and that's why it doesn't support the fish and the wildlife habitat that it used to. The general problem is we broke the plumbing. You know, Mississippi River used to spill into this swamp, and uh, levees were built, and it blocked off those annual floods that brought the water that would flush the swamp or brought the sediment that built those wetlands. And the whole hydrology of this entire ecosystem is connected all the way to the coast, right? This is the top of the Pontchartrain Basin. If we were to get into a boat uh, in this swamp, we could go all the way to the Gulf. And there used to be a lot more land out here, is that correct? Well, that was 6.3 miles of land. All of that is gone. Just subsided and sunk. It. There's no sediment coming in anymore. No replenishment from them. No, from the so river. as it sinks, there's nothing replenishing anymore. Well, Chris and I are here with Ryan Lambert. Ryan's the owner and operator of Cajun Fishing Adventures. What used to be land is now four or five foot deep. It's just gone. It's complete open water now. You know, and we're losing almost a, a football field an hour. Losing, what, 16 miles of land a year? That's, that's ludicrous. I mean, this is the, the worst natural disaster or environmental disaster in the world. It's right here in our doorstep, and nobody even knows of, or cares about it. If you look on this GPS, this is my boat. This is all my trails that I've been running. The yellow is land. It used to be all land. Got my See, this island last year had trees still on it. This right here is a remnant from an old community. It's called Bayou Chute. In the later years, it was just camps and people went on the weekend. But prior to that, people used to live. I mean, babies were born in these camps. All these were different houses. You know, you could actually scream to your neighbor, hey, you caught some grass, I'll be over there in just a little bit, you know? Now, the whole culture is gone. It's, uh, it's very heartbreaking to see it happen and knowing that the doctor is quarter mile away, eighth of a mile away, the Mississippi River. All we had to do is put her back into this marsh. She built it. We can build it back. This is what we call the red maps or the do nothing map. So if we were to do nothing over the next 50 years, this is the land that we anticipate losing on the coast of Louisiana. This is the LSU Center for River Studies. It was formed in partnership with the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority and Louisiana State University. This center was put together to really highlight the coastal land loss problem that we experience in Louisiana and some of the solutions that we're using to try to combat that problem. So Jason, tell me a little bit about this map we're looking at here. So you have anything from a structural protection project, which is designated by a pink pushpin, to some of our barrier island projects, which are represented by an orange pushpin. And it's all designed to reduce storm surge, rebuild marshes, any number of different things to actually rebuild the coast. That's, that's exactly right. The overall intent is to try to grow awareness that coastal Louisiana is disappearing faster than we can keep up. This is a small-scale physical model of the lower Mississippi River. It encompasses most of southeast Louisiana, about 14,000 square miles. In terms of physical size, you're looking at about two basketball courts side by side here. What actually is the dark coloration in the river here? They're small black plastic pellets that represent different size classes of sediment that the river naturally carries. And so it allows us to evaluate how that sediment moves with the river under changing conditions. What you're looking at here is a lot of black spread across this model. 
it paints a very significant picture to us. But obviously, the wetlands here near the delta, near the head of passes, uh, receive the sediment. They receive that input of nutrients and fresh water from the river. There's a lot of natural cuts and channels and crevasses that sediment freely flows through. And builds the marsh. And builds marsh. And this is, this is some of the most productive wetlands in our state. We need to try to move that upriver because some of the areas for a little bit further north in Plaquemines Parish aren't connected to the river. So this is pretty white. It doesn't have a lot of sediment distribution. Correct. There is really no connectivity to the river. That's ultimately what we want two of our first sediment diversion projects to try to remedy. And a sediment diversion is nothing more than breaching the Mississippi River levee, putting a control gated structure at that breach, and digging a channel from the river to the wetland. The, the levees were built for a good reason, to protect people from these devastating floods that obviously happen every year. I mean, if not for the levees, we wouldn't be standing right here. Right. We would be in water. We're looking at a scale constructed copy of an object. So the object that we're studying here is the lower Mississippi River. But uh, we do think that there is a balance. There is a way to reintroduce that natural process. So this model gives you information for a plan that you've written to develop solutions and conservation strategies, correct? It does, yes. It's a 50-year outlook. And in it, we have a number of projects that we think are wise investments for our coast to help restore our ecosystem. All of this headland here was rebuilt with sediment that was dredged from the Mississippi River. A dredge was in the river, picked the material up, put it in a pipe, and they pumped it here to rebuild this ridge. It's a fast way to build land, and it will work in concert with Barrier Island restoration projects and the diversion project. You know, this is not a one-off thing. This is not something that's going to happen quickly. Uh, we're going to be restoring this coast for at least the next 40 to 50 years and beyond. This is, you know, putting the bones back together of this, of this coastland. This is not just an environmental story. And basically, that coastal wetland buffer is what dampens and reduces this hurricane surge risk to New Orleans. Well, I'm here with John Lopez with the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation. We're looking at the Bonacary Spillway. It's uh, representing about 8% of the river's flow right now. The structure is located about 15 miles upriver of New Orleans, so it reduces the amount of water flowing past New Orleans and helps protect the city. This Bonacary Spillway was built for flood protection, and it works well for that. But these kinds of structures can be used elsewhere to restore and protect our cypress swamps. So you'd build a spillway structure similar to this one that we're standing next to and open it and close it as needed to distribute that sediment. Exactly. It would be a controlled diversion structure. So John, I live in Colorado. Why would people in Colorado be concerned about what's going on down here in the Gulf of Louisiana? Well, there are just a whole lot of reasons. One of them is, is right here. You know, a huge amount of natural gas, petroleum moved through our state that provides an energy resource for the whole country. But between us and that refinery is the Mississippi River. The corridor here is the largest port in the entire world. The national economy is extremely dependent on this river functioning. And if we lose our coast, the river's at threat. So many beautiful things come from here, certainly in terms of the culture, the heritage. If you don't like fish, maybe you like the grain that comes through our ports. If you don't like oil and gas, maybe you like the birds that you can hunt here. Louisiana is really a sportsman's paradise. This is the way Louisiana used to look. I mean, it was all marsh like this with bayous and little canals running through it. Look how pretty that fish is. Goodness gracious. You know, the river made all this as it deposited soil. It grew the marsh, and that's where Louisiana was born. So you tell people, I want to show you about coastal restoration or coastal erosion. You have to take them to what we can do, because if you take them to what's, what happened, you're just showing them open water. We're really in a race against time. Absolutely. Yeah. The governor uh, last year declared Louisiana was still in a state of crisis. You know, this is an emergency. This is not something we can wait for. We've got to start rebuilding our coast as soon as possible. <laughs>